Good afternoon, everyone. It's Mike. And I'm going to get started in about uh, 10 or 15 seconds here. I'm just making sure my microphone is working fine, which it appears to, and making sure this is being recorded. Because, you know, I did get a lot of questions if this is going to be recorded because, you know, this was sort of a, a quick decision to have this training today on Sunday. You know, I thought that, you know, with the holiday weekend, I know a lot of users are excited to get the new version. I'll be sending out the link if you're an existing user of Orderflows Trader. So if you have Orderflows Trader 3.0, I'll be sending you out the link to get the download the new version, Orderflows Trader 5, as well as the user guide. So it's exciting. I think it's exciting, um, you know, because some of you have been emailing me back and forth over the last about year, you know, saying, hey, Mike, can we get this uh, added in there? You know, this is how I like to look at order flow. And, you know, it, for some of you, it can be brand new. For others, it could be, you know, like, oh, uh, you know, uh, now I all make sense to me in the market. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to try and keep this relatively quick today, you know, an hour. Sometimes, you know, I do these presentations and they tend to run for over an hour. But, you know, again, it's Sunday, it's Sunday afternoon, and, you know, it's a holiday weekend. So we'll try and keep it short and sweet. Okay, so the before I get started, you know, brief disclaimer, we all, we're all adults here, right? We all understand that trading involves risk. Now, Order Flows Trader has undergone eight upgrades in this new version, right? This is the Order Flows Trader 5. People say, well, what about version 4? You know, if you're Asian or you ever spend time in Asia, particularly China, you understand that the number four is um, a very unlucky number. It, it sounds like the word death in Chinese. So, so we just sort of skipped over, you know, just like in, in the U.S., you know, buildings skip the number 13, right, on the floor. You go in the elevator, it goes 12, 14. Um, that's why it's version five. So you didn't miss anything out in version four because there was no version four. Uh, we just jumped to uh, version five. And I feel that you're going to find that these upgrades are going to help your analysis and help you understand market structure better. Okay. Now, you'll notice some of these are enhancements, right? There are new tools as well as enhancements to existing ones. Now, some of these enhancements are quite intensive in the coding part, because if you get one little thing wrong, it's going to drag your system down. It's going to make your system slow. So we really wanted to, um, you know, keep it efficient and keep it smooth and running the software, you know, as efficiently as possible. Okay. So the first upgrade that I'm going to talk about is a new tool. Okay. And this is called uh, buying and selling tails. In my course, Orderflow Alchemy, we called this the double O trade. Okay, if you haven't got the Orderflow Alchemy course, you know, it's a great course. There's there's a few setups in there that, you know, a lot of traders have been telling me, hey, you know, this is very helpful to my trading. And basically a double O trade is, is a buying tail or a selling tail. And when a buying tail appears, it's a sign of passive sellers disappearing on a push down. So as a result of the disappearance of those passive sellers on the way down, price often quickly snaps back, reverses back, it leaves a buying tail. Okay, and the selling tail is the opposite, right? A market has been rallying, but you don't have the passive buyers coming in, okay, to keep the move going up. You know, sometimes it could just be a stop getting triggered, okay? And basically, you know, those people that are short down there or long up at the high, um, you know, they're caught off sides. Okay, and the market often sees a quick rebound coming off of it. Now, when you have a lack of support of buying and a move up, right, what do you think the market's going to do? Well, it's going to come off, right? And that's what tails are. So with the buying and selling tail uh, tool, you also have the ability to draw out the zone until tested or fixed. And I'm going to talk about, you know, these different zones a little bit later. But uh, briefly, you know, I look for longs until tests, until the zones get tested again okay so it's going to help you keep you on the right side you know it's best to just look at a chart okay let's pull up a chart now this is the e-minis okay uh, we're trying to keep it relatively plain e-minis today I, as i was sort of thinking through today's presentation i realized you know what i should also do a presentation on 
strategies using these different tools because it's one thing to show you the tool but if you don't really understand how to use it then you're probably not going to get the most out of it and especially when you're trading with you know these new zones that are coming out um you know until tested okay so for ex this is it right here now in the indicator settings you know everything is in alphabetical order right except for the license that starts up at the top it's always up at the top um so buying and selling tail is at the top and you know, it'd be dark blue for bullish ones, dark red for bearish ones. And you can see, you can draw it out fixed, a fixed zone. Say you just want it highlighted in the bar, or if you want it until tested, okay? If you just want it fixed, you'd change that to fixed, and you just put out how many um, bars out you want to do it. But, you know, until tested is nice. Now, you do have the ability to look for swing highs and swing lows as well as check EVA, right? EVA is under the value area. It's one of the settings in the value area, right? And we've found that when you have a tail and it occurs in an EVA, it's a very high percentage trade. So for example, here is, in this case, this is E-minis, this is on Friday. Let me get the crosshairs here. Okay, you have the buying, sorry, you have the uh, selling tail up here, right? This is bearish, right? So you have the aggressive buying going up in there. Now, this is not a inverse imbalance, right? You just see it's, just, it's imbalance at the top. You're usually going to have an imbalance in a tail because it's zero and zero, right? It's a double zero trade and the price action came down and people say, well, you know, that's so easy, yeah, but so many people miss it. And in this case, this is one with an EVA. I have check EVA off here. Um, let me just pull up the indicator again. <laughs> yeah, it's disabled. And again, if you want to see it in every bar, you would check higher, higher, lower, low, right? But I have it just looking for swing highs and swing lows. And how you would trade it is, you know, once it leaves that tail up there, market starts trading down. In this case, this is a selling tail, right? You can see the market trading down. You know, as soon as the market starts breaking, you know, after the bar closes, it starts breaking down. That's where you get short. You can look at this trade. Right? People say, well, it's so easy. You know, double zero, I don't need an indicator for that. Yeah, well, you're going to stare at your screen all day and, and look for it. I mean, this was just a slam dunk trade. Now, this is one with an EVA. But again, you know, it's coming in around the uh, 70, you know, getting short, I don't know, 74 and a half, 75. Trades all the way down to the low of the day. You know, now some days it's it's not as dramatic as, as that. Let's take a look if there's any others on this Friday. This is just Friday, okay? Again, I'm trying to keep everything in the E-minis, but you know, it would be the same thing if you're looking at crude oil, uh, you know, mini Dow, NASDAQ, et cetera, okay? So, you know, honestly, in the E-minis, you don't get a ton of them because there's just so much volume, especially during the day. But you know, for those that are like, oh, you know, let's that's, that's, take a look at this. I'll show you something here. Um, what day was it? Well, this is right on the cash open. You know, on the cash open, you always got to be careful. Here's one, right, on the buy, then here's a sell. Came off a little bit, tested it up there. Uh, look at this. This was on the 17th, the low of the day, right? And you got the bullish EVA as well. All right, you see that it made a nice move up there, right? It, it held. It tested those areas. Now, again, you know, as I was Thinking through this presentation, I realized, you know, not a lot of people understand how to trade zones. You know, it's, it's one thing. You know, I see a lot of videos out there, you know, people, you know, they draw their zones out, but they don't really get into how to trade them. And there's, there's different ways to approach them, right? Because when the markets come back to a level, it can either hold it or it can blow right through it. And, you know, when it holds it, it's going to stop and reverse or it can just blow right through. And certain different types of levels mean different things in the market. So that's why I think it might be beneficial for me to do another training, but I'll probably just record it and send it out to you on how to use the zones. But I mean, you know, the low of the day, you're getting the buying tail, all right? 4401 and a half, you know, and it rallies all the way up in, you know, 20s, you get another buying tail right here, right? It keeps rallying up. Right? It keeps, you know, see, it comes down and tests it right there, and finally it breaks through. And, you know, in more volatile markets, you know, again, I'll, I'll diverge here, but if you were on, uh, you know, uh, let me just throw in mini Dow. Okay. If you were to, 
look at uh, you know mini Dow, okay, markets that are more volatile, that have more price movement with less volume, okay, you're going to see a bit more of them, right? Because you got a lot of zeros happening in in the bars, especially you know overnight or um, you know during the day, you get a lot of these knee jerk reactions, okay. So the filter that we added is the EVA, right? The expanded volume. It's value area rather. So you know, if you were to add that, it can take out, filter out some of the trades that don't have, you know, the, the extra confirmation in the order flow to, you know, to give it, right? So, you know, you get this beautiful trade here, right? You got a nice short coming in here and it's just Beautiful, beautiful on the way down. You know, people say, well, that's the same one from the other day. What about, um, you know, overnight? Was there anything overnight? Well, there was one it's trailing back. I don't know how far back that went the day before or overnight, right? Seven o'clock at night, 7.50 rather, you know, just for eight o'clock. You know, people trade at night, right? And you got a nice trade here. I mean, even if you're just holding it for five minutes, you're talking a move from, you know, the 70s, all the way up above, you know, 400, okay? But there's there's a lot of these trades to be had, right? Different markets, and if you could filter out um, some of them, you know, with the filter on, obviously you're gonna get less trades because now it's just, you know, it's looking for bars that have EVA. So you can see during the day, you know, there was one here, 659, um, had a nice move up. People say, well, it came down, well, you know, I mean, Packers can't be choosers. It's a move from 800 up to 850, basically. You know, a good 25 picks right there. Um, you know, that's that's an extra tool that you could add to your toolbox. Again, if you're going to use the EVA as a filter, I would suggest you use it on the more volatile markets like uh, Mini Dow, Gold, maybe um, definitely MNQ and NQ. You know, more markets that are more volatile. Okay, so. The next upgrade I want to talk about is the prominent point of controls. Okay, so prominent point of controls have existed in the order flows trader software. But one of the criteria that originally we had was it had to appear at swing highs and swing lows. And, you know, sometimes it'd be like, you know, we'd see these moves happen and it would just be like, you know, that, that, looks and smells like a prominent point of control but it's just not a swing high or swing low you know and so as a result we would would skip them and so what we did we, we made it so that you can use the prominent point of control anywhere okay as opposed to just swing highs or swing lows so if because was what we noticed is a lot of times prominent point of controls would come in just after the swing high or swing low has been made but since we had that one pretty rigid constraint that it had to be a swing high or swing low, then it just wouldn't show, okay? And as a result, those trades wouldn't be taken. So the we had to make an adjustment to look for it anywhere, okay? So uh, let's take a look at a chart here. Um, stick with the E-minis, right? So here's your swing low, okay? And market starts moving up, right? And we got a prominent point of control right here. Okay, it's a nice prominent point of control right before the market pop. Now here we have very bullish information, right? We have a slingshot POC, which is bullish, and we have a bullish value area, right? Bullish EVA. Now, where would you rather be taking this trade, right? Off this prominent point of control, which normally in the past would not show up as a prominent point of control because it would only be looking swing highs or swing lows, right? And this is not a swing low. And then you follow up with the bullish. So you're getting long, you know, somewhere after this bar closes, but now you could be getting long in this bar. So, you know, you're, you're getting in a little bit early, right? So you could see these things, these moves happening earlier, okay? As, as trends are developing in the market, right? You want to take advantage of them as soon as possible, right? And, you know, that was sort of, you know, while, while the prominent point of control originally is still strong, you know, this just gives you an extra option. Now, how would you do that is under the settings, you'd go 
to the prominent point of control. Okay, again, it's all alphabetical, so prominent point of control. So you can see here, it's zero. Normally you would have a setting of three or, you know, five, you know, or five. You know, you'd have different settings too. Look for it anywhere, you just set it to zero. Okay, that was just the easiest way to do it is to set it to zero. And then you'd click apply. It's already set to zero. Well, I just clicked apply. But that's how you would do it. Okay. So, you know, that was an enhancement, right? I said these were some new tools and enhancements, right? This is an enhancement to an existing um, tool. So you're taking the tool and making it better. Okay. Now, the next four upgrades, okay, are zone drawing abilities. Okay, so they, they deal with market exhaustion, order flow sequencing, inverse imbalance, and value areas. Now, each of these are important for their own reason. Now, honestly, I do not suggest that you draw out zones, you know, until tested on all of them at once, because again, you know, each market trades differently. And, you know, sometimes you may not want to use, um, you know, depending on the market, right? Because like I said, if, if you're, you can draw them out, but if you're trading, you know, more volatile markets, right? Maybe you're going to be looking more for inverse imbalances, right? It's like say NASDAQ or YM, okay? If, if you're trading more thicker markets, you'd be looking at the value areas more. I mean, that's not to say that you can't look at value areas in the wheat, but you know, depending on the type of chart, it's going to be not as, you know, if you're looking at a one minute wheat chart, okay, it, it only moves four ticks, right? You're gonna have a value area that could be drawn out, but you know, the value area is only 50 cents, two ticks, right? Whereas if you're trading, say a E-mini, right? And you're looking at the value area and you draw that out, you know, you're gonna have a nice solid value area on a one minute chart. So again, it depends on the markets that you're looking at. Um, you could add them all up on there, but you know, just be aware of what you're looking at, right? Some, we tend to keep the colors the same, so you may need to adjust the colors a little bit, but I'll show you that in a second. So, you know, the last thing you want to do basically is end up with a lot of zones on your screen and then you're just back to square one. Um, so let's just go back to, where am I? We'll start with the market exhaustion, okay? So, for example, you see these zones being drawn out. These are zones of market exhaustion, all right? And what's the market exhaustion here? Exhaustion prints, okay? So you have your choice of fixed. Before it was just fixed. And you draw out your level, you know, the single just in the bar itself, or, you know, if you wanted to draw out five price levels, 10 price levels. Now, this is something that I've been getting emails since the original Orifos Trader software started in, in 2015. Um, because traders you know, just find, you know, certain market, you know, many, you know, so many different traders I've had the fortune to work with over the years, especially, you know, releasing the order flows trader software and seeing what's important to different people. And this is something people have been hounding me for. I'm like, yeah, hey, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Um, and then, you know, cause honestly, you know, sometimes you're drawing out a lot of zones. Again, it, it puts a lot of strain on the PC and, and that's the last thing we want to do. But I'm going to show you in some markets, you know, behave differently. Okay, so this is E-minis. Okay, so we'll start here. Okay, and again, I have exhaustion print here, exhaustion print here. Now it's being drawn out until tested, right? Here's an exhaustion print being drawn out until tested. It tested it here. These haven't been tested yet. Okay, your market rallied up, hit it. All right, came, you know, I say came back down, but... You know, it came up with is that 64 and a quarter, you know, got as low as, you know, 62, 61 and a quarter. Again, just sort of hanging around there. There's another one tested, you know, this one got through. These are areas that need to be repaired. That's why you often see the market come back to them. And there's different ways to trade that, right? You can trade it, the market to react. Personally, in most markets, I'm looking for them to be repaired. In other markets, I'm looking for them to be tested. And when I say other markets, I mean very liquid markets, right? Treasuries. Um, you know, I, I have a group of treasury traders, trade 10 years. All they key on are, are they're just looking for these exhaustion prints, right? Because 
markets like 10 years trade tons and tons of volume, right? You could have 10,000 contracts trade on the bid and 10,000 trade at the offer and the market's not going anywhere. And then you just see 10 contracts trade, right? Then the market starts screaming in the other direction. That's their go-to trade. And, and having things like this, a lot of times you'll see in, in market like treasuries, it just comes right back up to that area of the exhaustion and then comes off again. Um, there's certain strategies as well to trade this. I don't have it on this chart because this is E-minis. You know, some people say, well, this is ugly, right? You see, it's just all uh, these zones, right? Well, again, if you're, this is literally to the tick, okay? This one failed, all right? And this one failed. I guess you could say it failed. It got through it by two ticks. This one got through it by two ticks. Imagine, you know this price level, right? You have a chance to come back up to this level, repair it, and come off okay you have a limit 50, uh, 57 and a half sell one right you have a stop a couple ticks higher right i'm going to show you another example is where you could where literally the market comes right to that level right to the tick and reacts right here's another level came one tick through it right if you just got a two tick stop one tick stop right this one you two ticks okay you get stopped out you two tick stop Okay, you don't get stopped out. So you have you know a loss here, a loss there, loss here, here, right? You're buying it at, at 50, it rallies all the way back up to 55. All right. You're risking one or two ticks. If you're risking, you know, two ticks here, two ticks there, maybe you're getting stopped out, maybe you're a little bit wider on your stops. There's different ways to trade it. Okay. Because you know, you're always looking for these areas to come back. So I mean, if you're getting five points and you're risking you know, one or two ticks, you can have a lot of losers, right? I, again, I, I don't recommend that for everybody. You know, I recommend that for people that trade. You know, another way people trade zones is they're looking for the zone to get blown through, right? The market to repair it, when you understand market repairs itself, it finds those areas of weak order flow, comes back and repairs it, and oftentimes keeps moving. So imagine you just have a buy stop in here, okay? Again, you do a buy stop with a stop a couple ticks below. It goes up, right? You get a nice move up higher. There's, there's so many different ways to trade. That's why I have to do a strategy video on this to help everyone understand it. Now, again, if you were looking at a market like, say, treasuries, I got treasuries on here. I'm sure I do. So I have my glasses on, so it's a little hard for me to read the screen as close. Let me just pull it up. Now, you know, on treasuries, you're not going to use a, a one minute chart. You're going to use, ideally, you need something with, to take into account the price range. Okay. So, um, you know, maybe you're going to use a four range chart or you could use a volume based chart or a tick based chart. It's up to you how you want to use it. But you can see these areas, right? Look at that. The three came right to it. You could just put a bid in here. Hopefully you could get filled, right? And you can see how these these areas just come right back, right? Look at this. This was an area from, you know, here's an area right below the low of the day. Got within a tick here, okay? Didn't happen. You know, there's another zone here. Again, these two zones, it got within a tick. There's different ways to trade it. I'm not saying you have to trade it right at the tick. I know, again, you know, you can put your limit just before it, depending on the market, right? Understand the market that you're trading, okay? And again, when you see, an exhaustion print in the market, right? And then you start seeing the tail get bigger. You know the direction you want to be on, right? You, you want to be short until it starts testing those areas. Okay, so I got exhaustion print here. Great, I get short. Another exhaustion print, great. I know the market's going in my direction. Stay short, stay short. Until where? Well, I don't have another exhaustion. Uh, print coming in until way down here. So, you know, I know I got some room. I, I know I can give this trade some, you know, a, a area to grow, to go to just as is in here, right? Look at this. Okay. Exhaustion print, exhaustion print, exhaustion print. Okay. You had one here. Okay. You came back up and it just sort of spent some time around here. It's been about 20 minutes trading around here. Okay. It didn't react, but I know I've got exhaustion down here, exhaustion down here. It's leaving these um, zones being drawn out, right? Then I get another one here. Great, get long. If you're not already long, you, know, you should already be long in here. But then you see the exhaustion print come in here, long again, right? And just stay, stay with it, right? It's gonna help keep you on the right side of the market. 
you know, so that was the, you know, that's 10 years. So again, when you're dealing with market exhaustion in high volume markets, watch for those areas to be retested. I mean, in every market, you should actually look for them to be tested, but in specific markets, again, not everyone's interested in trading 10 years. It's a, like watching paint dry sometimes. Although now with all the talk of interest rates, at least it's got some movement, but you know, in very high volume markets, you know, they're often retested. In other markets, you're looking for them to be repaired, but it's a level that can give you a very tight stop. Now, order flow sequencing, right? We did the same thing, okay? Now, again, you know, you have all these zones being drawn out. You don't want to be just drawing out zones willy-nilly, right? You want to be understanding why they're drawn. And honestly, I see a lot of people draw zones out on their charts. I see these 14-year-old kids on YouTube posting videos. Heck, man, some of these kids got more subscribers than me, and it's just like... I don't get it, but they just throw up these magical zones on there without any rhyme or reason. But order flow gives you solid reasoning and order flow sequencing, right? If you understand what order flow sequencing is, it's the result of resting liquidity in the order book being taken out, okay? More importantly, um, strong liquidity, being, you know, stacked liquidity, an offer with next offer is more volume, next offer is more volume, next offer is more volume. Okay, and as we know, markets like to retest these previous areas of liquidity. Sometimes they hold, sometimes they fail, but you know, when they hold, they often hold to the very tick. Okay, so you could have those height stops, you know, those one to four tick stops with 10 to 20 and more tick targets. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Um, oh, is it this is my 10 year chart here. Let's go back to the e mini chart. Again, under the indicator, you would find order flow sequencing. Okay, where are we here? Order flow sequencing. Scroll down, order flow sequencing. Okay, it's enabled until tested, right? Okay, so that's why I want to see until tested. Okay, so you can see right here, this is a order flow sequencing here. So I know I had resting liquidity in the book. And again, it's coming in an area that you had a lot of trading going on and it's kind of hidden. That's where looking at the order flow is going to come in handy. And using some software that reads the order flow for you is going to help you, okay? And if I had, you know, here's sequencing here, here's sequencing here, sequencing here, sequencing here, what's the difference, right? The next bar, it came in and it filled that area. Okay, fine. Filled that area, filled that area in here by a tick, filled it. Obviously, we're trading back and forth. But look at this one. Hmm. What happened? You had the sequencing, the market sold off. Now it's got to come back to repair it. Okay. And it came back literally right to that zone. You know, you just you have an offer in here. Where? You know, you just put it inside the zone in here at, you know, 64. Maybe you want to go one tick below it, 63 and a half. A nice little, you know, where's your stop? Just on the other side, you know, you go 65. You're putting a, a limit in at 64, stop at 65. The market trades down. I don't want to talk about, you know, how it trade all the way down here, but, you know, 64, you know, down below 60. That's a nice trade, right? Now, again, you can see here how it came down right to that tick and then rallied back up. Now, it rallied back up to where? Right, an area where you had a bearish prominent point of control. So again, it's not, you have these levels, okay? But you gotta start putting the pieces together, right? It's not just, well, I, I had a zone here and it reacted, but then it came off and it failed. Well, you know, as a trader, you should be analyzing what's happening in the market. I know the market's selling off. I know I've got um, a selling tail up here, okay? I know I got the bearish prominent point of control here. I know I got the bearish EVA here. So I know I'm selling off, okay, already. Where's my target going to be? It's going to come down here to 71-ish, right? That's the top of this zone from earlier. It's being drawn out. It tests it, 71, rallies back all the way up you know, to 77. Now I'm not saying you'd buy it here at 71 and sell it at 77. You know, if you had a bid in here, 71 and a quarter, you know, even 71, okay, maybe you got lucky. You had something in. It's a quick five points almost in the same bar because you know this bar opened up traded down we even closed up at 76 in the quarter boom very fast trade five points okay and then bearish order flow comes in here okay
okay? And the market starts selling off, right? Then we get through that area. Just like here, people say, well, you had one here and the market failed. Well, yeah, okay, it sold off. Okay, now I'm gonna watch, you know, if I have a limit in here, well, okay, I get stopped out, fine. You know, but what happened as I got stopped out, I know I had some bullish order flow sequencing coming in here. So again, I'm not all too surprised to see it get stopped out. So that's how you would use the, you know, again, I can go more deeper into it, but again, I, each of these I could literally do an hour on. I don't want to keep everyone on here for an hour today. Now, the next one, you know, I was supposed to, uh, uh, first I was going to talk about the value area, but I'll come back to that one. Uh, I'll talk about the inverse imbalance zones. Okay, again, until tested. Now, this was one that we had a lot of trouble with, I'll admit, because it was being linked because you know when you're dealing with imbalance inversals, what's causing it, right? What's well, a sign of trap traders? Okay. Now sometimes these levels are never tested again in the same same day. Other times they're tested very quick, and they're they're areas of previous attempts at breakouts. And you know if you've ever done any studies on breakouts, you know it's always fascinating to see what happens when the market comes back to that level. You know there's and I know traders that have strategies that they have a second chance strategy that have very high percentage. It's basically the same trade, but it's coming back down to that level. Now we have an area where traders were interested in and the market's coming back to that level. Okay, basically these are failed breakout trades. Sometimes these are great go with trades, right? I mean, imagine, right? This is NASDAQ, right? This is 30 second, or sorry, uh, MNQ. So 30 second chart. Okay, now granted, imbalance reversals, and if you're have used them on the order flows trader software you understand that they happen more in more volatile markets mnq nq to a certain extent nasdaq um, very rarely see them in markets like uh, e-minis definitely not treasuries um, you know you, you see them off and on in gold crude in the more illiquid times you tend to see them but you know markets that are going, you know, that got high volatility during the trading day. That's where imbalance reversals appear more. Okay, so Nasdaq this is Evan Key rather. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot of them, right? Whether you're using a 30 second chart, a, a 20 range chart, a one minute chart, you tend to see a lot. And again, you know, there's different ways to trade these. Right? I know I had a failed breakout here. Market started going up, it starts coming down. Okay, I had a failed breakout. We're going to make a second attempt at it. Right, we had a first attempt here, obviously market in, second attempt here, third attempt, right? You know, who knows? Maybe there's a support level in here that you know some advisory service put out or whatever. Okay. Well, I know I had people interested in this area before, in, enough to you know, leave that inverse imbalance there. Okay. Well, I uh, just put a stop in here, right? Just put a stop in right in here, right in the middle of the zone. Right, or you put it one tick below, right, with a sell stop in here, and then you get your buy stop to get out. Right, it's a nice quick trade to take. Now, again, it's you know this one got filled really quick. This one got re filled really quick. I well, this is a stacked imbalance. You're looking for the dark colors. Now, with an inverse imbalance, okay. So I'll just take you through the settings here. Um, scroll down here. Um, it's under volume imbalances right here until tested. Okay. Used to be fixed. Now we've added until tested. Okay. Now you could choose to display the stacked imbalance as well until tested. But the color, right, blue and red, you'll notice the opacity is 120. That's why the color is so strong here as opposed to the normal stacked imbalance. Like this is a green. This is a light coral okay so let me see here if there's any others right here was a stack sorry an inverse imbalance short from before right when you see an inverse imbalance you expect the market to immediately trade in that direction okay that's your sign to get short right here okay now you take that trade you get short take your profit whatever it starts coming back up oh you, I, you know i had this area where earlier i had that inverse imbalance, right? I had traders that were trapped in the market. They were looking for a breakout for the market to go higher. 
now we're coming back. Okay, how to trade it? Well, you're just throwing a little buy stop in here. Gets filled, take profit up here. If not, your sell stop is just, you know, five ticks away. Okay, sometimes you're gonna get stopped out. Sometimes you're gonna get a 10 or 15 point winner. You're gonna lose, you know, four, five, six ticks on your, when you're stopped out, but you're making, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 ticks on the upside, right? On your take profit, right? Because why? Because this was an area psychologically earlier, people were interested in buying for whatever reason, right? But they got stuck, they got trapped. Now the market reacted. Now I'm not saying that, you know, this, whatever this is, 70 contracts up here caused this move down because 70 contracts traders were trapped. No, they had, this is 1036, you know, they had 20 minutes, 10 minutes to get out. So it's not like the 70 contracts is causing the market. Things changed in the market. It caused the sell-off to happen. Market sold off. But now that it's coming back, conditions have changed this time. Now that we're making that second run-up, conditions have changed. And you're starting to see, as you're getting closer, you're starting to see the bullish order flow come in here. Bullish prominent, uh, sorry, bullish slingshot POC, bullish EVA. You're starting to see the buying and balances come in, the sequencing come in. And you're like, oh, you know what? I got this level right here, 90, right? That you're finally getting that little push through and then boom, it just pops from 90 up to where? Up to double O, even a little bit higher in the next bar. <laughs> now that's the inverse imbalance. Now, the, the next three that I'll talk about, what time is it, 1.30? Okay, let's go back here for a second. Right, because so I've covered buying selling tails, the prominent point control anywhere, the enhanced exhaustion prints, enhanced order flow sequencing, enhanced inverse imbalance. Now I'm going to talk about enhanced value area. Okay, and I'm sort of going to lump, I'll start out with the enhanced value area, and then the next two, um, tick aggregation and short and big numbers. You know, the reason why I just sort of want to keep it a little bit separate because I'm going to jump a little bit into uh, equities as well, okay? Um, and maybe if I get a chance, I'll, I'll pull up some crypto charts. Now, value areas, right? Value areas are very important, okay? Now, this was a big one that I wanted to have originally done a while back. And, you know, <clears throat> value area is something that, you know, if you've ever studied market profile, you understand what the value area is and it's important. So I'm not going to get into the details of that. But now we could see those sort of those virgin value areas, right? That's the whole what you want to look for. Just you know, when you think of until tested, okay, you know, with market exhaustion, with all the you know sequencing and balance, is you're looking for those virgin areas to come for the market to react to. Now, when you're dealing with value and value areas, value represents volume in a crude sense, okay. Oftentimes, value areas, when you're looking at it on a bar by bar basis, right, are traded into in the next bar. Okay. But there are times where they're not traded into in the next bar or the next bar or the next bar, not until later. And these areas represent great buying or selling opportunities. And, you know, you know, you understand markets move in search of value, right? That's, if you've ever, again, studied, market profile, you know, the whole market auction, auction market theory, AMT, deals with markets looking for value, right? And, and you know, there's people that that's all they believe. And, you know, that that's what they trade. Now, one of the, I'll say drawbacks, but, you know, one of the constraints when you're dealing with things like market profile or even to a certain extent volume profile is that most people look at it on a, daily basis right they're they're looking at the daily profile okay i mean you can but there's a lot of other trading going on right so sometimes you know if you put in a, a value area and the market starts moving away from it the rest of the day well you know that value area you know it's you're not gonna get much use out of it because the market's already moved away from it and it's not gonna give you any more trading opportunities but when you're looking at on a intraday basis, you know, on a minute base. Now, you can look at on a, on a minute base chart, on a five-minute chart, 
Um, you know, even range-based charts, tick-based charts, volume-based charts. It's, it's fascinating how oftentimes these levels hold because the market is looking for value where it can test it or trade back into the value or it can reject the value. So let's take a look here at the chart. So, um, well, what do I got? I think I got a mini chart here. Is this, make sure I got the right chart. Settings set up. I, I sort of went through these to make sure that these were set up so I can show you each one. Now, this setting is a little bit different. Okay. So you can see here, right? It's turned off. Okay. It's this fixed. Okay. If you change it to until tested, what you have to do, now this is important, this is the only one you have to do it on, is the value area box size. You got to make a you got to change that value from zero. If it's zero, it'll just show it in the bar. But for this one, you have to change it to an, uh, like two or above, right? So that it's going to draw it out at least, you know, two bars. And you just click apply and you click OK. Now, this is a great tool, right? If you're using you know, a one minute, a five minute chart. Sometimes people say, you know, I like to use order flow, but I use a five minute chart or a little bit longer chart. And, you know, a lot of what I teach with order flow is really meant for shorter time frames. but you could use the value areas on the 15 minute charts. You could use them on five minute charts. You could use them on stocks. Look at this, this is Apple, okay? This was on Friday, right? This is your value area here, okay? I actually have the value areas itself. I have the indicator turned on, but the actual value areas being drawn, turned off on this chart for some reason, uh, set to transparent. Because if you're looking at this chart, right, you can see how the market came right back up to this level, came back off. Well, what was so special about this level up here? Well, that was the previous value area, that, you know, that was untouched before. Right, the, the virgin value area. All right, and then came back here, tested this value area, got through it, came back into that value area. Right, market's always looking to test value areas. Got another value area here, got right up into it within a tick, came back off to where the value area here. So, you know, sometimes a lot of traders wonder, well, why does the market stop up here? Well, look to the left, to the left, to the left, as, as Beyonce says. Um, that's where the value area was before, right? It, it, it tracks it, right? Market's looking for the value, right? Traded a lot of volume in here, all right? Now it's come back to an area where it traded a lot of volume. Oftentimes, right, if I had the, let me just turn on the value areas here, because you can't see them, I, I disabled the value areas on each individual bar. If I were to turn on the value areas, transparent, I don't know what color it was. Uh, where am I? Where's my black? I think it's black. Oh, I got the, this one. I should change that to gray. Let's give it a second to come back up. But you know, while we're waiting for that, you know, let's take a look here, right? This is E minis again. You know, this is the market closed on Friday, but you can see why, you know. Market sold off. Okay, this is after the close, right? It was very quick screenshot, right? Sold off, came right back up. Why did it stop at this tick? Well, that's the value area low here, right? Then it sold off again. Okay, here's another value area untouched, right? Came off, rallied right back up to this level, sold off again. Here, it's another one, right? Came untouched, came right back up into that area, sold off a bit. You know, here's a small one. Again, you know, those are just those those little areas right there. You know, this is one was done right on the on the close at one minute after the close. There's one here, there's one here, right? Market went up, came back down, right into that area, and then bounced back up to where where they had that value area from earlier. Right? And again, you know, you can see right value area here, right? Here's one here, right? Here's one here. You can see the market went up here, it tested it right here. Okay, up, up down right in here tested it shot back up right? he's throwing a bid here somewhere right here's another one right here throwing a bid here 
right? Market rallied right back up into this area here. Now this one got through it, but it stopped at this at the second one here. Now there's different ways to trade these as well. You know, obviously you could look for the retest and the market to come back up there and then react to it. Now again, there's there's a thing we call cascading. Um, when you're dealing with things like value areas, right? And you don't see it a lot in e-minis because you know e-minis is a market that trades a lot of volume. But when you start seeing, you know, one, two, three, you know, in a row like that, you know, obviously as a sign of a tr market trending down, when you're leaving a lot of open value areas, you know, it, it can, um, it's a sign of you know a, a trending market. Now these are stacked in balance. That's a stacked in balance. Um, this one at 44, I don't think came back down on Friday. Well, it did here, tested it right here. Again, from 46, tested the high of this zone, you know, up there. But, uh, you know, this one is gray. You know, normally it would be red or green. It's gray if it's a uh, doji candle or open closed at the same price. But when you start seeing something like cascading, where if you had, you know, one two three in a row you know that's your sign to you know be short okay again you want to be on the, the right side of the market because when the market is putting in um virgin value areas in a row right that's where you want to be going in that direction so here's back to the apple chart right you've got one here one here so you can see this is the value area here right this is the value area here this is the value area there you know, let's scroll back a bit, right? You got this big value area here, okay? Came right down to that area, right? You got the value area here, right? Notice what happened, okay? Came right down to that area, rallied up to the next one, right? Here's another one right here. Now, as so you're going to ask, why are some green, why are some blue? The normal coloring, it would be green. It's blue or dark red if it's a EVA, right? This is an EVA here, which is bullish by itself. This is a dark red one as opposed to these lighter red colors here. But I mean, look at this, right? One, two, three, it's already cascading down, okay? And oftentimes when you see it cascading down like this, when it starts repairing them, it often just marches right through it to the upper one. Okay, and this one it got to one, two. So I'm not surprised to see it get through here or here. Didn't get it through this one. But you can see just leaving it, leaving it, leaving it. All right, then it came down. Then it changed, right? This is your low of the day. Starts going back up. Okay, came, comes right back into the zone right in here. Right? You know, you're just throwing a bid in here somewhere near the upper end of it because you're looking for the market to come back in and test it. I mean, you don't have to test it, you know, in test in the midpoint, you know, sometimes you're going to get filled, sometimes not. Or you can test it up on the upper end or somewhere up in here. Okay. So you can see how the markets, you know, just tend to react. Now, you know, another question I, I got from a, a tester was, should you carry them over from previous day levels? We do draw them out. Um, you know, some, it, it depends. Okay. If it's a market that trades 24 hours a day, like, futures do yeah i'd be interested in doing it but you know on stocks i think you got to be a bit careful um in drawing them out over days on end okay so you can you can just see how the markets often will stop within those zones stop within those zones right you're just looking for those areas to trade around right ideally you know you want it to be more than one bar out Right here's just got one bar that came right back into it. You know, you want to get some space in between the zones rather than just one, one, one. You know, I, ideally, um, you know, you want to get at least two or three bars where it's drawn out. Now, again, since I'm on Apple, right now, that's going to take me on the next couple of changes here. Okay, so on tick aggregation okay now this is something that that somebody has asked me recently to do and, and we we created the tick aggregation um because of crypto okay and you know crypto is trading satoshis basically so you could buy you know you, you don't buy one bitcoin you buy whatever amount in 
fiat currency, right? You say, I'll buy, I'll buy $20 worth of Bitcoin. And, you know, it's going to be like 0.0001 of a Bitcoin, you know, something like that. And the exchanges will register it, you know, as a trade, you know, 39.9999999. And while well, well, I'm doing this, I'll, I'll switch to, uh, well, I'll, I'll go to Coinbase in a second, but because you could use this also in NASDAQ, right? So if you're trading NASDAQ, so for example, right, I had a NASDAQ, is an MNQ chart, okay? Now I have a 30 second chart. Why? It's because the market's so darn volatile, right? You can see this bar right here, right? 30 seconds, range of 87 and a quarter, all the way up to 82 and a half. So, you know, that's a big range, right? If I'm looking at a one minute chart, Basically, it's these two bars put together, you know, all the way up to six and a half. So, you know, a 20 point range in, in a minute. And that's on a slow day, right? There, there's some bars that are just, you know, some days, you know, some bars are just off the chart. So what you can do, you go to the indicator setting, okay? And you scroll down, it is under, where are we here? It's under the ladder contents. Okay. Here, tick aggregation is set to zero. So, you know, I could set it to four. Okay. Since NASDAQ trades in, in quarters, you know, 71, 71 and a quarter. Um, you know, or I can change it to eight. That'd be like two ticks or two points rather. Click apply. The next one I'll talk about is shorten big numbers. Okay. But for now, I'll stick with tick aggregation. And this way, if again, I have this set for a 30 second chart, I'll bump it up to a one minute chart. Now it's going to take a while because it's got to go with, aggregate these ticks. Now, this is not something you'd want to do during the course of the trading day. You should already have this set up, right? When you open your charts every trading day, you should have your charts set up the way you like to look at them. Okay, rather than jumping around, changing your charts, that's not what you want to do, right? You, you should have a set of charts. Like for me, I've got I use tabs. Right? I have all these tabs open on my screen, on my trading platform, so I can see them, you know, as they're coming in. Now, for example, all right, Apple, right? Like this is a stock, right? So it trades in one one cent, right? One seventy point one three, one seventy point one four, fifteen. If, you know, there, there's some stocks, right? If, if you get involved in, in some stocks, I don't know what's a good uh, stock. I, I don't follow a lot of different stocks, um, you know, but Apple is one that follows order flow beautifully. Um, it, it just follows beautifully. You know, oh, actually, I should have done Tesla. I should have done Amazon, but I think Tesla's trade similar, right? See all these areas in here where you've got no trades, right? big spaces in in the gaps in the trading it's just zeros okay basically from what was at 12 up to 32 you know it, it really makes understanding you know reading the order flow a bit harder so you know what you would do you're going to aggregate these ticks right so instead of doing it in one cent increments right because basically it's, it's trying to read it like this right it's trying to read um you know 31 32 33 34 when well, there's nothing going on there right so you know maybe you want to make it i don't know 20 10 or 20 yeah you, know, you don't want to go too crazy i mean and again you should understand the market that you're trading just don't you know willy-nilly let's make it 10 So you can see it's removed some of those zeros in there, right? Because it's, it's you know, basically it's going from, you know, you can still see the numbers on the side here, but it's basically 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 like that, even though it's still showing the scale. I mean, that's just NinjaTrader. That's one of the limitations in NinjaTrader, but it's now it's making it a little bit easier. So um, what is this? Okay, so here's the MNQ, right? It looks like a 
the, uh, the normal chart, right? This is MNQ01 minute where I have the tick aggregation on, right? So instead of having these big sweeping bars up and down, it looks normal. Okay, now, granted, you may be asking, why, oh, why does this candle look weird, right? Why does it have this little wick up here? Again, you're, you're aggregating the ticks, okay? So there might have been a trade, you know, just outside of it, but since you're aggregating it, I think this one I did by eight ticks, okay? Um, that's why you, you don't see that, you know, maybe it was one contract up there, but it's, it's really sort of putting it all together. Now you, this is a lot easier to trade than, you know, just going back here, 1350, this is a one minute MNQ chart, all right? If you're looking at this, right, it, well, heck man, well, what am I supposed to do with this bar? Doesn't even fit on my screen, right? I actually have portrait, I have 28 inch monitors that I have turned portrait so that I could see this, but do I really care that it's trading, you know, this volume in here is zero against seven, zero against nine, you know, seven against 16 at, at these individual price levels? What's easier to read, that or this bar? Right, I, I see in here, you know, I'm still getting good information, right? Bullish prominent point control, another bullish prominent point control, market exhaustion, multiple imbalances, same move, but it just looks manageable. Now, this is on a futures chart. Again, you're not gonna do this for every market. Most markets, you don't need to do this. NASDAQ, it's nice to do it on, um, if you're trading crypto, it's nice to do it on, if you don't have it turned on, your chart's gonna look like this, right? Especially on crypto, right? We'll say, you know, where's Bitcoin trading at right now? 38, whatever, 900, but it's actually trading 38, 900, um, spot eight six four seven three two seven right so it's just very messy it easier right so it's shortening big numbers right and it was specific to cryptocurrency but it also can be used in you're going to use it in in all the other contracts i have it turned on for all my stuff so you can see here right i can see it's you know the cumulative delta is 21.27 um, you know, the volume for this bar is 73,000 K basically. Um, you, know, you can see like here, these volumes, right? In the, in the 10 years, um, you know, that's 10.46 K, 13.49 K. Cause otherwise it's gonna be, you need these big numbers and it's just gonna, kind of, you know, basically keep this thing so open um, to see these numbers. It just makes it a little bit easier. So, Again, I'm going to send out the email for users of existing users of Orderflows Trader. The upgrade is free. And if you don't have the Orderflows Trader yet, go to orderflows.com slash oft5.html. I will create another video on sort of this, what do you want to call it? Like the strategies of using, you know, these tools, because it's, it's one thing to have these tools, right? But you got to know how to use them, where to apply them and you know sort of you know the the different strategies so for example you know for those of you that are still sticking on um go back to crude oil or well, i didn't go back i don't think i talked about crude today you know i love commodity markets right and nothing is a greater commodity market to trade than, than crude oil um i wish i was watching crude oil in the 50s rather than the 90s i hate high gas prices <laughs> but it's uh just one of those things you know things i hate high gas prices high taxes there's certain things well i tell you what uh, i'll just show you just really quick it's uh, i'm not sure what day sometimes you see these things and they're just so obvious now, in the night session, now, depending on what you're looking at, what do I got on on this one? I'm not even sure. Okay, well, this is sequencing. Um, I want to change that to value areas. Take off the sequencing. Well, for now, I'll just, I'll just remove the sequencing one. I'll change it to fix. I'll just remove that and I'll go to value areas. So again, you know, until tested, you got to change the box size to two, which is 
unfortunately my programmer is like i'm sorry I, I had to do that to get it to work properly um on trending markets up and down you know especially these markets sometimes you see quick reversals the way to catch them uh, there was a quick reversal on friday or actually Remember what market had a quick reversal the other day? I don't want to look at night session there, but um, well, this wasn't you didn't see the quick reversal, but this is what we call cascading here, 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 right? You're looking for the market you know, here, so you already got one, two, three, four going in that direction you know these ones that are just small one area yeah you know, okay fine just happened that way just happened here you got that one big one here one big one here one big one here you know then you start seeing the small one you notice how the small one just came right back up then the market fell over right you're looking for those moves and you know sometimes you're gonna get bigger zones big zones like this right from 80 you know basically a 40 cent zone they hold pretty well you don't see them a whole heck of a lot, but when you see them, pay attention to them, to those big wide zones. I mean, look at this, right? This is a zone that came in from way earlier. Market traded right down in there. You put in that prominent point of control and you rallied up, right? So if you just got a bid in here somewhere up near the upper end of this zone for that test in there, just like here, right? You've got up here, look at this. You got this zone from way earlier came right up into there 25 area in here 25 26 you say you sell it right at the bottom 23 okay you know you got another zone in here to hide behind okay so you're getting short at 23 even if you have a 10 tick stop up here at 35 inside this next zone okay you know you got that resistance already right these are the value areas i'm talking about here you're getting short up here at 25 all the way down, well, I got a zone down here at 50. Okay, so when you start seeing subsequent one, two in a row, you know, pay attention to those. You wanna go in those directions, you know. It's just fascinating to see how these markets often react. You know, sometimes this happens, you get that zone, trades right back up, boop, 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 on the other side, okay. That's fine. That's, that's trading. You know, that, that happens. Here you came down in here. You got a little bit of a rally up, exhaustion print, and then the market sold down. Here, right, you got the zone. Market rallied up to where? To that zone, right? Now you had two in a row, right? I just said buy the two in the rows, but it traded right up into a zone. Okay. The, you know, in trading, you want to often trade in the path of least resistance, right? And if you've got zones sticking out, into you um you know you'd be careful like here you don't really have any the, the bullish zones right you know nothing being drawn out so you got sort of clear sailing down here right you're not running into any potential support right sold off nicely rallied back up into that zone sold off you're still not seeing any bullish zones down here but anyway guys i i could go on and on um i, I just hope you guys have We'll find this uh, software very useful, these changes, and uh, this upgrade rather, and say changes, um, this upgrade very useful. I'm sure you will. I, I'm already enjoying it. That's why I've been literally working furiously to get you that user guide out um, this morning. But after I finish this, I'm gonna get something to drink, have a brownie, I'm gonna send out to existing users the link to upgrade it you don't have to add in your user uh, sorry your license token if you already have your license token in on order for trader it's fine now the question is do you need to uninstall it you can to uninstall the order flows three just go to remove ninja script assembly open it up and give it a second to come up and you can remove it just scroll down to find it in here, order flows trader. Just click that and click remove. It takes about 30 seconds to remove. And then just go on and import the new one, Ninja Script add on. Okay, very simple. You don't need to shut down Ninja Trader, then restart it, then import it. You, 
usually what I do, I just remove the old version, then I import the new version. Okay, basically throw out, I say throw out, but you know, it just moves it to the trash folder. And then, because because if you shut down Ninja Trader after removing it, and then you open up Ninja Trader, it doesn't have your footprint on there, and then you got to go recreate your charts from scratch again. I think, if I remember right. So anyway, guys, have a great Sunday. Look for the email from me. I'll be doing another. I'm not going to do a, another live training on the strategies or, or methods of how to trade these zones because you know when you're dealing with zones, right? There's, there's so many different ways to test it. You know. The important thing is you stay bullish above bullish zones, you stay bearish below bearish zones, and you know you look for the market. You know another way to trade them is you're looking for um, the market to repair those areas, right? And you're looking for them depending on the markets and the zones that you're drawing out. Look for the areas to be retested, right? Like you would the value areas. So have a great Sunday, have a great uh, President's Day, and again, you know, send me an email if you got any questions. On Tuesday, I'll be doing my regular weekly live session with starting with the the um, using the new software. So use it for the next. Like I said, you know, it's a nice day. Sunday, Mondays, markets are open, but nothing's. Who knows what's going to happen? Biden says Russia's going to invade Ukraine again. Um, who knows? The crypto's been selling off. So who knows? We'll see what how the market reacts uh, tonight. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye bye.